Hello everyone. Um, so we will be talking about knowledge infused policy gradients upper confidence bound for contextual bandit. Uh, this is joint work with um, collaborators at the AI Institute South Carolina, uh, Dr. Zhang, um, Manas Gore, and uh, my advisor, Dr. Shea. So just to uh, introduce the problem, it's uh, the traditional uh, contextual bandit setting is one like uh, a recommendation system. Depending on the type of user uh, encapsulated in the user context, uh, choice of music is recommended to them. And one example of uh, the ecosystem that might define the context is that they could be listening to certain artists or certain albums or they could be just uh, exhibiting um, collaborative behavior whatever their friends listen to for example so here we see uh, the components of this ecosystem uh, the schema that might be involved and one type of uh, rule that might be learned like user uh, A listens to song B if uh, user C also listen to song B which you can see at the bottom under caption C so the problem we're trying to solve is this kind of uh, recommendation system which fits uh, classically into the contextual bandit problem so <clears throat> once again what are the types of things that could be learned? Uh, the first example is that user a listens to a song B if it's sung by an artist C. And the artist could either be popular or not popular. Uh, so if it's a popular artist, then that kind of behavior is usually found in a music recommendation system. Um, if it's not a popular artist, then it's collaborative behavior. They're listening to the song because B, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, C listened to it. And also, if the other first case when they're not popular is uh, fan behavior. They're listening to the song because it was sung by an artist C, whether they're popular or not. So these are the types of things that we're trying to learn. Now, in a bandit setting, the data is flowing in as a stream. It's an online setting. So um, the learning method, essentially being trial and error, would take a lot of time before it starts to meaningfully learn the behavior of um, the users. So a big question then is, how do you handle exploitation versus exploration? Right, that's always the big question in the bandit setting. Now, if you explore too aggressively, you may take a long time to reach the solution. If you exploit too aggressively, then you may reach a suboptimal solution. So in this case, especially when the context space is large, as, as in the relational domain, uh, here there are multiple objects and multiple relationships between the objects, so the context space is very large. Uh, if we could guide the exploration uh, using prior knowledge about the behavior of some users, this can happen because uh, a human could be uh, uh, familiar with some types of users in the system and provide knowledge that way. So we develop an algorithm here to incorporate this type of prior knowledge into a relational um, bandit learning setup. So here is the algorithm. It's policy gradients in the four bandits. So um, we initialize a policy, draw an arm based on that policy, and then compute the gradient. And for, for the gradient, we make an, a knowledge-based adjustment. And how this knowledge-based adjustment is derived is using uh, what you see at the bottom. It comes from uh, first principles of Bayesian uh, posterior formulation. 
for more details you can look at the paper or we, we can talk about it afterwards but here uh, the exploration is not yet introduced how the knowledge is incorporated into the policy gradient setup is introduced so how do we quantify um, the exploration criteria in an online setting uh, and why would it occur uncertainty so like i said already the behavior is unclear while data is being streamed in until you see enough amounts of it and then uh, even if there's a human who is familiar with the system or let's say they're watching uh, people click the system they click around in the recommendation system they would need some time to observe the user before um, before being sure what type of knowledge they want to give to the system so this would cause initial uncertainty so a confidence bound if like the use a upper confidence bound the traditional word would be useful in uh, this kind of setting so uh, we derive an upper confidence bound again um, the math of which I, I will leave in the paper it is uh, a little involved so then I sh I'll show you here how the upper confidence bound looks so you can see in step six in addition to the knowledge adjustment which is plus or minus one that a quantity is the upper confidence bound and depends on the iteration k as the traditional upper uh, confidence bound does it, uh, it has the effect that it explores uh, using this bound initially and later on this uh, bound causes a more aggressive exploitation as more and more data is observed so here is the results as against uh, a baseline uh, from the paper relational boosted bandits um, it was published in AAAI last year and um, their algorithm is called rb2 they don't use knowledge but it is the only algorithm right now on relational bandit setups so that's our baseline so we can see that um, with uh, knowledge uh, the total regret does come down but initially around the zero iteration uh, with knowledge it, it's a little uh, ha uh, erratic the curve so uh, with the introduction of the upper confidence bound um, we see that uh, th the initial part is also smooth and the total regret comes down faster um, also the data being used here is the music recommendation system it's um, a continuous stream of uh, music flowing in and the user deciding if they like it or not that's the reward it's a Bernoulli reward so thank you I'll take any questions at this time